Well, life just wouldn't be fun without a cube root. So let's take a look at this guy. f of x is equal to the cube root of the quantity x plus 1 plus 5. So, the cube root, no cube root shape. And we know that, that guy is this cubing function just kind of laying on its side like that. Okay, so what am I doing with this? Well, we always look to see what's inside the function. Inside I see a plus 1. I'm going to do the opposite of that, which means I'm going to go to the left one unit. Inside, horizontal, opposite of what you see. And then outside, I see a plus 5. Outside, vertical, exactly what you see. So I'm going to go up 5 units. And that's where we start. So the cube root function has its key value right here at the origin. I'm not going to take that guy and go left 1, up 5. So that's his new key point. From here, I'm going to draw or sketch out my new set of x and y axes. I'm going to build from there. But we can't really do this until we know what those key points are for the cube root function. So if you go back to those um, videos for our parent functions, you'll see what those key values are. The key value happens at 0, which is why I've got this point right here. Then at 1, but then you don't get another key point until 8 units after the uh, key point here. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then I lost count somewhere. Uh, 8. Right? And you also have key points going on the left side. So you have key point here at negative 1. And then over here, negative 8 units from this key point. So think about what your cube root shape looks like. The cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. The cube root of negative 1 is negative 1 and 0, the cube root of 1 is 1, and the cube root of 8 is 2. So I'm still plotting those same key points, but instead of plotting them relative to the origin, I'm plotting them relative to this new point. And by knowing those key points, I don't have to recreate and get a brand new set of values in a t-table. I just plot those key points. I'm taking that shape, I'm taking this guy right here, and I'm slotting him to the left 1 and up 5. So. We now draw this shape. It's kind of vertical here in the center before it curves out, like that. So there's your cube root shape, shifted one over, five up. Now things are going to get a little bit um, trickier, right? So here's the next set of notes for you. If you have a coefficient in front of your function, it can do a lot of different things. It doesn't really determine um, a shift as much as it determines uh, the shape. So if the coefficient in front is something that's negative, you're going to take whatever shape you have and you're going to turn it upside down. Then you're going to look at the magnitude of that. If you have a value, value that is greater than 1 in terms of absolute value, it's going to take whatever shape you have and it's going to stretch it vertically. If, however, you have a value that is something less than one, like two thirds or one half, it's going to take your picture and it's going to compress it. So something like this would be like a two, and a two is going to make you be twice as steep as you were before. But if it were one half, it's going to take the normal pattern that you had, it's going to cut it in half, giving it the impression of looking wider, but really it's a vertical compression. Uh, first, let's look at this guy negative the square root of x plus 3. So our square root shape is that half sideways parabola, like that. The negative inside, this is where things get tricky, this negative inside is going to reflect you across the x-axis. It's going to basically turn you upside down, so instead of going up and out like this, is going to go down like that. And then plus 3. So plus 3 is outside. We're going to do exactly what we see. So that means we're going to go up 3 units. All right, so let's put all this stuff together and see what we come up with. So first we're going up 3. So that's where my key point is going to be. And just like I've been doing this whole series, I'm going to dash out a new set of x and y axes like that. Now, to make sure we understand what's going on, if I didn't have the negative, I would be plotting 
my key points. So it's 0, 1, 4, and 9. So for the square root, you would have had square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 9 is 3. So without the negative, your graph would have been this guy right here. But now that we do have the negative, it's going to be flipped upside down from here. So instead of going up, you're going to go down 1. You're going to go down 2, and the square root of 9 is 3, so you're going to be going down 3, like that. So this is going to be our shape. It's still that half sideways parabola, but now it's turned upside down. right? So let's see what happens when we start adding even more pieces to this, and even some coefficients.